In this edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, we're talking keys to the game in the AFC Championship game. This is the fourth straight year the Kansas City Chiefs have hosted the AFC Championship game. Unbelievable. In their last eight playoff games at Arrowhead Stadium, they are 7-1. and one. What are the keys? How do the Bengals knock off the Chiefs? We're about to tell you. In this edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, we're going to talk keys to the game for the titanic struggle that is about to occur in Kansas City at Arrowhead Stadium for the AFC Championship between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Kansas City Chiefs. And the first key and foremost key is, like I said, it's Arrowhead. About 80,000 people out of their mind, stomping their feet, screaming. The decibel level that's been measured there has proven that it's the loudest stadium, even though it's outdoors, the loudest stadium in the National Football League. Dealing with that crowd noise is going to be a big, big factor. Joe Burrow said during the course of the week that he played in the SEC, so he's handled crowd noise, and he's right. I mean, Alabama, off the hook. Uh, Texas A&M, home of the 12th man. They have a big banner. goes all the way around the stadium, home of the 12th man, just encouraging fans to get as loud as you possibly can. It's true. He's dealt with crowd noise. This one is going to be off the hook, though. And it's not its not just for quarterback Joe Burrow, the offensive line. You're going to have to identify. You're going to have to identify the middle linebacker. Center and quarterback, identify the middle linebacker. All the protections work off of that. And then you can, not, after the identification process, that has to be on point, and then communicate it up and down the line of scrimmage so everybody's on the same page. So a tackle doesn't think it's slide protection, and he slides, and he lets – a pass rusher on him that goes inside, he thinks the guard's sliding and he passes it off and the guard doesn't slide and he's passing it off to air. You can't have those kind of things. So identification, communication, and I can tell you as a former player that played in loud stadiums, it's tough. You look at a teammate right next to you and all you see is lips moving. You can't even hear. You can't hear yourself think it's so loud. So now you have to do everything by hand signals. So your only advantage was a snap count against a very athletic, strong defensive lineman. Now that's gone because you can't hear a snap count. So it has to be a silent snap count. So you look and move when the ball moves, just like the defensive player. So that only advantage is nullified. So now you have to look at the football. You have to look at the center to make get the hand signals for the call. You have to look at the ball. When the ball moves, you move. And then you have to make sure you keep another eyeball on the defensive lineman, is he staying in the same place? Or is he shifting inside, outside to another player? What's going on? Do I have a linebacker now? You have to be aware of all that. So you'd like to have three eyeballs, not just two. And it can be very, very disturbing. The problem is you may end up identifying, communicating all that and doing it properly. But if you're late, it's wrong. Because if you're late and the ball snapped and they're coming off and you're not sure, you know, you know what the call's supposed to be, if you, you get there too late, you can't execute, you can't block. That's the problem. That is the crowd noise issue. So the Bengals all week long, uh, they practice in the stadium where it's louder rather than outdoors. The, the noise is more contained, and they cranked all the speakers up in the stadium and tried to simulate as much crowd noise as they possibly could. But I'm telling you, in the broadcast booth, the floor shakes. These people start stomping, screaming, yelling. The floor vibrates. I mean, it's, it's a heck of an experience there in Arrowhead Stadium and a huge advantage for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's why this is the fourth straight AFC Championship game that they've hosted. And in their last eight playoff games at Arrowhead, they're 7-1. and one. Tom Brady's the only one that beat them. So it's going to take a titanic effort and a titanic struggle for sure. Another key in this football game is turnovers. Who is going to steal a possession? That is massive. If you looked at the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills, it was a track meet. No turnovers in the football game by either team. Up and down the field they went. 25 points scored in the last two, two and a half minutes of the football game. Ridiculous. It was crazy in regulation and overtime. It was nuts. Um, and, and it could be that way uh, when, when these two teams square off because at Paul Brown Stadium on January 2nd, 34-31, both teams initially – Start with a three and out. And I'm thinking, wow, is this going to be a defensive battle? And then up and down the field they go, 34-31, final. 
Who is going to steal a possession with a takeaway? Who is going to make the other team punt? Um, it's it's going to be very interesting. Takeaways uh, f- for the Bengals. In, in the playoffs, the Bengals have been extraordinary in the, in the takeaway department. They're plus four. They have five takeaways and only one giveaway. So they're plus four. In the regular season, they ended up even on the season. Um, over the last six games, including the playoffs, they're plus six. So the Cincinnati Bengals are doing a good job in the turnover department. And when you're plus, even against these better football teams and taking possessions away from a quarterback like Mahomes with the weapons that he has in Hill and Kelsey and others, that's going to be a big, big deal in this football game. So who's going to get the, who's going to get the takeaway? Who's going to steal a possession? That's going to be, that's going to be massive. Uh, the Bengals uh, during the, during the regular season, Nine and two when they were plus or even, one and five when they were minus. And bear this one in mind. The Kansas City Chiefs during the regular season lost 12 fumbles. That was tied for most in the National Football League. They had some ball security issues. They weren't quite high and tight enough. Defense knows that. Try to get the ball off of them. It doesn't just have to be Patrick Mahomes' interceptions. And in that 34-31 contest that the Bengals won on January 2nd, Mahomes gave them a couple of opportunities from an interception standpoint, and they didn't capitalize. He's like Brett Favre a little bit. He has so much confidence in his arm strength, he'll try to get it in a little pinhole. Not, never mind a window. He'll try to put it in the tightest spot possible. When he makes a mistake doing that, you have to make him pay. Don't let him off the hook. Catch the football. Don't let it go to the ground. So takeaways and no giveaways and accumulating some takeaways. Three takes just like they had last week in the in the playoff game against the Titans, three interceptions. If they can get three takeaways, that's a good sign. And then offensively, Bengals, no gives. If they can go plus two, plus three, that would work for them. Another big key, third down and fourth down. Fourth down has become the new third down because neither one of these football teams want to give a possession away. So I think fourth down is going to be equally important to third down. What are you going to do? I think if it's fourth and two or less, depending on field position, I think, I think both teams are going to go for it. I don't think they want to punt the football away, depending on field position, obviously, and score of the game, flow of the game and all that. But I think the aggressive posture that a lot of teams in the national football league are taking on fourth down, I think you're going to see it uh, unfold here at Arrowhead stadium in this AFC championship game as well on third down, stay out of third and long. Get the Kansas City Chiefs in third and long. If you stay out of third and long and you make it a manageable third down and sustain drives and, and keep the ball away from the Kansas City Chiefs, play ball possession, get time of possession built up in your favor, that's a plus. When you get Kansas City into third and long, get them off the football field. It's going to be a challenge, though. The Chiefs in the regular season converted 52.2% of the time on third down, number one in the NFL. They converted more than half of their third down opportunities in 18 football games. That's a big sample size. Um, on fourth down, if, if it doesn't work out on third down, what about fourth down? You can extend the drives on fourth down as well. There's going to be pressure for teams to score points on every possession like we talked about because these offenses are so dynamic. Kansas City on fourth down in the regular season converted 66.7% of the time, two out of every three, tied for first in the NFL. Bengals offensively converted 65%. They were third best. Defensively, they held the opponent to less than 40%, 38.9, second best in the NFL. So fourth down could be every bit as important as third down in terms of sustaining drives or getting off the football field in this big football game. Another key, red zone, low red zone, meaning inside the 10-yard line, first and goal situations. The Bengals' defense has been outstanding in the playoffs in that department. Teams have gotten in the red zone eight times against the Bengals' defense. They have allowed two touchdowns. 25% conversion rate for touchdown is extraordinary. And if they can do that against the Kansas City Chiefs, that would be huge. In the regular season game, Kansas City went three for three in the red zone in that 34-31 loss. If the Bengals can somehow score seven every time they get in the red zone and allow the Chiefs only to score three, a couple or three possessions in the red zone, that four-point swing adds up quickly. 
it can be a big, big factor in the football game. There is no doubt about it. So red zone offense, red zone defense. And the thing about the Kansas City Chiefs red zone is that's when Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy get so creative. They have this uh, quarterback who played at Oklahoma by the name of Bell that is now playing tight end. And they will use him under center or in the shotgun, almost like a wildcat type thing because he's a big tight end. <laughs> uh, but he has played quarterback, and he played quarterback for the Oklahoma Sooners, so he played quarterback at a high level. But now, like I said, he is the, in the second tight end in the two tight end package with Kelsey. So they use him. Um, they'll use Kelsey as a quarterback, and they'll have Mahomes deliver these underhand passes to running backs, to other receivers, and they have the formations, personnel packages, motion. They are so darn creative in the red zone with what they do. The Bengals are going to have to dot the I's, cross the T's, and uh, mind their P's and Q's, boy, when they get in the red zone against the Kansas City Chiefs because you know Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy are going to have cooked something up. There's going to be no doubt about that. It's not going to be your typical red zone offense. It's not going to be vanilla. There's going to be a lot of uh, chocolate syrup on it, some sprinkles, and a cherry on top. Bengals are going to have to sort through all that. Another key, I think, is playing with a lead. The Cincinnati Bengals, all season long, everybody's like, let's get off to a faster start. Let's, let's not fall behind. Let's not tr play from behind. Let's play with a lead. Uh, in the first game, 34-31 game in, at Paul Brown Stadium, the Bengals fell behind 14-0, 21-7, 28-14. Three different times they had to come back from a 14-point deficit. That's going to be tough to do on the road in Arrowhead. They're going to have to score first. They're 6-1 and one in the regular season when they score first. So that, that's a big deal. Play with the lead. And uh, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a huge factor. There, there's no doubt. The first quarter was their worst quarter for 18 games in the regular season. They were outscored. 81 to 67. They only scored 67 points in the first quarter in 18 games. Second quarter, 146. Third quarter, 102. Fourth quarter, 139. I mean, they were scoring half the points that they scored in the second and fourth quarter in the first quarter. They got off to slow starts. In the playoffs, it's just the reverse. Their best quarter is the first quarter. They've got 16 points in two games in the first quarter and allowed three to the opposition. They've played with the lead in the playoffs. That's what they have to do in Arrowhead against the Kansas City Chiefs. Play well in the first quarter. Score first. Don't play from behind. This is a tough football team to play from behind against. I know you did it in the regular season game at Paul Brown Stadium, but it's a much different dynamic on the road in Arrowhead with all that crowd noise that you're dealing with. And if the, if the Kansas City Chiefs take a 14-point lead in Arrowhead, that fan base wants them to score 60. They want to bury people. So it would be a tough environment. Play well early in the first quarter. Play with a lead. The next key is pretty obvious as well. The Bengals need to win explosives. In other words, they need to create some explosives like Jamar Chase did, 11 catches, 266 yards in that regular season game, and limit explosives like they did. You have Kelsey and Hill with a combined 11 catches for 65 yards. Jamar Chase had 11 catches for 266. Same number of catches. Jamar Chase individually had 201 more receiving yards than Hill and, and Kelsey did combined. Can't expect that to be the case again, but you still can win the explosives. And you, it, it, what it boils down to there is which team is going to run to the football and gang tackle, and then which team is going to make somebody miss and get some yards after catch, run after catch. That's always a big deal. Who's going to win the explosives? Who's going to make the big plays? Who's going to limit the big plays? A big, big factor in this football game because both of these quarterbacks with the skilled people that, that they have can really light it up with explosives. Another key is hidden yards. We're talking field position. Put Mahomes on a long field. Let Joe Burrow and his offense experience short fields. It's going to be tough. The Kansas City Chiefs special teams – their special teams coach is also the assistant head coach, Dave Taub, just like Darren Simmons is here for the Cincinnati Bengals. They both have the same type of responsibilities. They both have the same type of reputation around the National Football League as being extraordinary special teams coaches. Dave Taub's special teams, punt return team, third in the National Football League. 
Kickoff return team, ninth in the National Football League. Punt coverage team, first, letting up less than five yards per return. Kickoff coverage team, fifth in the NFL. So they have all four units in special teams are in the top 10. Three of the four are in the top five. Watch out for Tyree Kill as a punt returner. They threw him out there, the Chiefs did, against the Buffalo Bills to return punts. When there's no tomorrow, single elimination in a tournament like this is, they're going to do whatever it takes. Tyree Kill is ridiculous in terms of explosives as a receiver and as a punt return guy, potentially. Tyree Kill, the Chiefs, it's like a track meet with the Chiefs. And instead of a baton, it's a football. And Tyree kills the anchor man. This guy, the only other person that I can remember seeing that was faster with the football in his hands, Deion Sanders. Tyree Kill has that kind of explosive speed. You're going to have to control him in the passing game, minimize big plays. And if they throw him out there as a return guy, trying to dictate field position in their favor or break one for a touchdown in the return game, you're going to have to corral Tyree Kill. But the big thing is, both teams have good kickers, but Evan McPherson is out of his mind hot. Eight for eight in the playoffs now. He is nine for 11 in the regular season, 50 yards and beyond, two for two in the postseason. 11 for 13. Are you kidding me? <laughs> 54 and 52 yarders last week against the Tennessee Titans. He wins the game at the gun with a 52 yarder. Now, when you look at it, uh, both kickers are hot. There's no question. But uh, Butker, he's he's uh, he struggled a little bit here in the playoffs. He missed his only field goal of 15 beyond, so he's 0 for 1 there. And he also missed an extra point. So he's 3 for 4 in field goals, 9 for 10 in extra points. And like we said, McPherson is perfect. 8 for 8 field goals. Three for three extra points. Kicking game, special teams, field position, hidden yards, going to be big in this football game. Another big key, protection, pressure. Joe Burrow got sacked nine times against the Tennessee Titans. The only time in National Football League playoff history that a team has allowed nine sacks and won the football game. How'd that happen? Well, the Bengals held the Titans to one for eight on third down. And they had a plus two margin in the turnover department. Three takeaways, just one giveaway. That over over compensated for the nine sacks. When you have that many negative plays, nine quarterback sacks, not counting tackle for loss in the running game or whatever, nine sacks, that's a lot of negative plays to overcome. You won't be able to overcome them against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Bengals are going to have to tighten it up with the offensive line. Backs and blitz pickup, tight ends, everybody that's involved. And the receivers have to win their one-on-ones. Joe Burrow has to get the ball out of his hand as quickly as he possibly can. There has to be a quick game. There has to be a screen game. There has to be a lot of things that's going to uh, help the Cincinnati Bengals in terms of protecting their quarterback. There is no doubt about it. You just can't. Joe Burrow was sacked 51 times in regular season, nine times in this one football game. I mean, you know, six over 60 quarterback sacks now. In the, in the season and the including regular season and playoffs, I mean, you're going to have to keep him a little bit cleaner. In the in the regular season game on January 2nd, the Bengals, Joe Burrow sacked four times. Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, not sacked at all. You can't go negative four in the sack ratio. They were negative eight in the sack ratio against the Titans. Kenny Hill was sacked one time. Burrow was sacked nine, really 11 but one was nullified by a timeout, one was nullified by penalty. Can't happen ever again. And as far as pressuring Mahomes, you're going to have to do that. I mean, you can't let these guys run around back there, create, extend. You know, uh, you're going to have to keep Mahomes contained in the pocket. You're going to have to mush rush him. Keep your rush lanes. Don't get distorted in your rush lane. Any one rush lane gets washed away, it gets distorted. Mahomes is going to make you pay for it. Both of these quarterbacks can hurt you with their feet and legs. They can both run. Patrick Mahomes in the playoff game against the Buffalo Bills was the leading rusher for the Kansas City Chiefs. In fact, I think for the playoffs, he's the leading rusher for the Kansas City Chiefs. I better check that statement before I throw it out there. 
That's the regular season. Let's see here. Preseason. Yes, he is. I was right. Patrick Mahomes, 98 yards rushing on 10 carries, 10 scrambles, 9.8. And he rushed for a touchdown. McKinnon, the running back, is 85. So you're going to have to contain Patrick Mahomes, control him, contain the rush lanes, and pressure him, and uh, give Joe Burrow a clean pocket. Give him time. Give him space. He will dissect the Kansas City Chiefs. He's already done it once. He can do it again. There's no question that protection and pressure is going to be a big, big factor in determining the outcome of this football game. Another key is adjustments. The Bengals won 34-31 less than a month ago. Kansas City Chiefs are going to adjust. Steve Spagnuolo is going to adjust. He'll double-team Jamar Chase. He's going to put two bodies on him. There's no question about it. That's fine, though. Jamar Chase is not a selfish football player. Joe Burrow mentioned that during the course of the week in one of his Zoom conference calls. This wide receiver room is special. They don't have divas. They just want to win football games, and they want the wide receiver room to contribute, not just Jamar Chase or just T. Higgins. So if they're doubling Jamar Chase, he's making a big contribution to success potentially in the football game because it's leaving T. Higgins one-on-one, leaving Tyler Boyd one-on-one. Whoever has the one-on-ones, you've got to win. You've got to win. So any adjustment that Steve Spagnuolo makes, you have so many weapons that you can utilize. It's not all about Jamar Chase. There's T. Higgins. There's Tyler Boyd. There's C.J. Uzama. There's Joe Mixon. I'm talking about Joe Mixon as a receiver as well as a runner. Joe Mixon against the Tennessee Titans had over 50 yards rushing, over 50 yards receiving, 20 touches, over 100 yards. Five yards per touch. That works. That works. There's a bunch of weapons that can be taken care of. So any adjustment that Steve, Steve Spagnuolo makes, Joe Burrow needs to adjust accordingly with the football. He's not going to try to force the football to Jamar Chase. He's going to take, he's going to, the football coverage is going to take him to where he needs to throw the football. And he will. And he'll he'll do it well. So adjustments are going to be are going to be a huge factor. Um, the Bengals, I think, are going to tweak some things, do some things differently. And like the great Paul Brown said, and particularly at this time of year, it's like you have a core plays that identify who and what you are offensively and defensively. The key to doing that now is keep those core plays intact and do them differently. Make different things look the same. Make the same things look different. That is the big key. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to outthink yourself. Don't have 50 plays when you can have 10 plays that you can get to a bunch of different ways by personnel groupings, by formation, by motion, by window dressing. Make the same things look the same. Make the same things look different and different things look the same. That's a big key. And the other, the other factor in that is you want to apply the pressure. You don't want to feel the pressure. You want to apply conflict. You don't want to feel conflict. That's what it's all about. Once you get to this level in the playoffs, there is no question about it. Another key is penalties. You have to play a clean football game. During an 18-game regular season, that's a pretty darn good sample size. Bengals, the second least penalties incurred in the National Football League. The fewest penalty yards by any team in the National Football League. In the, in the game against the Chiefs in the regular season, the Chiefs were penalized 10 times in that football game. Six first downs as a result of penalty. They had a punt return touchdown nullified by penalty. In a 34-31 game, that was huge. In the last drive that the Bengals had, when they went, for, they kicked the game-winning field goal at the gun, they had a 19-play drive because <laughs> there were six plays at the end of the football game due to penalty. The Kansas City Chiefs were grabbing, holding. So they're very handsy. They're very handsy defensively. They're going to get hands outside the framework of the body. They're going to be called for holding for pass interference. Um, the Bengals have to be very clean in their technique. Offensive line in the secondary, all of those kind of things. Penalties could be a huge factor in this football game. You get in the red zone, you don't want to give up five yards because of a false start. And that's that's an issue the Bengals are going to be dealing with with that crowd noise. Once the offense gets in the scoring zone, 
the crowd noise is going to amplify even more. So you're going to have to really laser focus in the red zone. No pre-snap penalties, no false starts. Don't line up offside defensively. None of those kind of mental errors. You can self-destruct by turnover. You can also self-destruct by penalty. And honestly, the Kansas City Chiefs, and that loss during the regular season, the Bengals, self-destructed by penalty. Ten penalties is way too many for a football team as good as the Kansas City Chiefs. And as a result, the Bengals got six first downs by penalty. That is a big number, a huge number. I don't anticipate that being the case in this football game by either football team. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right, you know? Yeah. Gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out firststarlogistics.com.